So we're, there's different well, dimensions, mm -hmm. and there's different fractals of our higher self mm -hmm. within you each can, one of these dimensions. Right, and you can focus on whichever one you want. There are ones <laughs> that are having fun, and there are ones that aren't having fun. So what you do is, by, as I say, if you just stay in the moment, stay in the, if you try to figure all this out with your human brain, it is not big enough to handle it. It is not built that way. It is very much in linear time space, and it's very limited. That's the reason why for as far back as you can remember, you will hear people say, stay in the now, stay in the now, stay in the now. The rest of it is an illusion anyway. So if you stay in this moment and operate from the standpoint is you can, maybe you don't understand how to create anything. Maybe you don't understand now time. It doesn't matter. You can stay in this moment and focus and say, for this moment, I am good. And I'm going to do something that makes me feel a little bit better. That's all you got to do. Step it through in that little tiny way and you will feel better. A month later you'll feel world, world's better. A year later you'll feel world's, world's better. Don't focus. Thinking is the addiction of humans. That is the biggest addiction of humans is thinking. Stop thinking. Your thinking makes it worse. You are a creator God every time you think of something. There is a what I call it, what everybody calls the law of attraction. This is not a being. This is like a mechanism that, that operates. So whatever you think goes out to this mechanism, and it's a vibration. The law of attraction does not send back and say, okay, I'm going to send good things to you. It doesn't know the difference. It just sends a vibration back to you. So you're a god, and you say, I don't like that. So that doesn't mean that it's saying... You don't like that thing. What it hears is you're unhappy in this way. So it goes out to the law of attraction. The law of attraction goes, got it. You're in charge. <clears throat> Best general manager ever. Okay? You say, I've got the feeling of this. It's the feeling of this that goes out to the law of attraction. The law of attraction goes, yes, you're God. You get what you want. It comes back about three times stronger. So if you're going, you, you, you're not good enough. What happens, the law of attraction goes, got it. You want more. So you will now be surrounded by more three things in your life that make you go. If you say, God, beautiful. I love that. Law of attraction goes, got that. You want that vibration. Now you're surrounded by three things that will be in your path that make you go, oh, I like that. Always your choice. It's not the car. It's not the person. It's the feeling. It's the feeling. It was never the stuff. It's the feeling. So if you can feel that way about a car or a person, then and you can focus <coughs> on that, then yeah, you can get it back. But people think about it too much. But that's what you were here for. That's what makes the intricacies. It's the human brain in time, space, in duality that's created, created all the contrast. That's made this job the intense job it is. So I read the book, The Secret. So the, whoever wrote the book, The Secret, has a little tiny piece that there's a secret. Pure genius. Pure genius. It's absolutely true. The problem is that people get caught up in the secret being stuff or a person instead of understanding the concept that this is vibrational. So it's about how you feel. It's not about what you want. The, the law of attraction, if you say, I want this, what you're going to send out is you've just sent out the vibration of I want. Okay? That's what you're going to get. So you're going to continue to want it forever. You've got to send out, I'm perfect. I always get exactly, exactly what I want. I've got it. Can you feel the difference between I want, I want. That's a need. I need, I want. Two, I already got what I want. Do you feel the difference between that? And feeling grateful for yeah. having it. And gratefulness, I mean, that's almost like lowering yourself to your God. Stand up. You're not grateful. It's mine. It's mine. I can have it. Fine. Big difference. Big difference between, oh, I'm so grateful. I want, oh, please. New Age is driving me crazy. No, that's the wrong vibration. You are a god. Own it. Own it. And the second you do, everything changes. And the cool thing is the law of attraction not only sends that back, but it matches people. So whatever you're vibrating at, you will match. And I'll give a really sad example, but a true one nonetheless, in a couple ways. Let's say you have a baby. And the baby comes in, two parents, there's two parents, and this baby dies of crippled asthma. 
Now, the first thing, 99% of the time, this is a new entity that's never been there, gets plopped down into that tiny body from over there and goes, oh, hell no, I'm not doing this. bam oh, they're gone. Now, that situation matches in now time with parents that come in wanting to have the experience of something really extreme. Really, really extreme. You don't go on the other side and you come over and you go, I want to be from these parents and I want to have this kid. It doesn't work like that. The way it works like is you do a vibration. I want it to be soft. I want it to be tough. I want it to be extreme. I want it to be very extreme. In the 60s, 70s, gay people, that was a big thing because you couldn't escape it and it was intense. It was very intense. Losing a child, always. Losing a parent, Parent, young, that's another game changer. Uh, be in the middle of war. Being in the middle of war. And I will give you an example, I don't know how this will help the guys, of why, because I get this, why would we do this, why would we do this? There are things that are created, experiences that are created that can't be created any other way. And I'll take an example, war. Without a doubt, especially American men are the only ones that I know, although I've worked with a lot. I did work nurse in Houston. I, I dealt with a lot of people from all over the world, <clears throat> but I especially know American men. American men are raised, especially, I'm 59 years old, so American men were raised, you do not show emotion. Emotion is the way that you create. It is absolutely the way you create. Women have to, men are shut off for it. Do not have it. You're not allowed to have it. Period. End of story. Uh, I was born and raised in Central United States Church of Christ Preacher. You did not help. I wasn't allowed to, let alone the men. That was next level stuff. However, the exception to that rule is war. And a man is absolutely expected and allowed to love another man, to feel deeply about another man in a very non-sexual <coughs> way, to the point that they're tied together forever, for a lifetime. It is a relationship that men report on that there's nothing like. They don't have the same with the love of their life, whether male or female, ever. There's nothing else like it. And it is built out of war, one of the worst things in this game. But they can't have that experience any other way. Okay? Would sports be a... Uh, sports very much like that. Yeah, very much yeah. like that. It's like the mini version of war. They're allowed to love <coughs> each other in camaraderie that way where they're not accepted any other way in society. So, yeah. That's why it's so popular. Okay. Yeah. Well, is like there a male and female? In reality? Outside the game? No. Now, absolutely, you can play like there is, but that's a that's a division that's a... It's, it's, it's like the dualistic thing. It's a... Uh, yeah, it's not. No. <laughs> no. When we're out the other... We're everything. We're, we're not divided. We don't have just part of us. We have all of it. And people have a hard time with that, though. And I'm going, uh, guys, you have a child inside of you you're very aware of. You're very aware of that child. You're very aware of a teenage self. You're very aware of a young adult self. And the older you get, the more selves that we have. There's a work self. <coughs> there's a family self. There's a daughter. There's a mother. There's a son. There's an uncle. All of these different aspects of you are inside of you, right? And if I said, if I gave you a million dollars right now, I said, here you go, a million dollars, this is what would happen. First of all, probably, the child would jump out first and go, I want to play, I want to play, I want to go, I want to go travel, I want this toy. That's what would happen first. And then you'd take the child and you'd set him back, way, way, way. And then depending upon what other, you'd try to figure out how to get out of your job. So you'd, like, do that. If you're a parent, you'd want to take care of your kids. If you're... If your daughter, you don't want to take care of your parents. All of these things would go into play. It, at the end of the day, you'd take all those voices in your head and you'd come up with a plan. And that's how the million dollars would go. Well, you're a part of Source in that way. You are one of the voices in Source. There's just a whole lot more voices. And on the other side, inside of you, you're very aware of what the child is saying. You're very aware it's a separate entity, right? It's not any big deal. But that's how Source is. That's how you are over there. When you go back, you don't disappear any more than the child does in you. You don't disappear. Just like there's more and more of you all the time, the older you get, 
and the more experience you have, they don't, the other stuff doesn't disappear. You know what all of it is. It's the same way with source. Well, same I don't way. mean to be hogging all the questions here. If anybody else has one, speak up. Because okay. If you don't, I will. I'm going to pause, <laughs> take a drink of water, and smoke a cigarette. Talk amongst yourselves and let some of that. I want to talk about religion when you 